Hey all you mudslingers out there, my name is Chuck Baum and welcome to Old School Pottery. I'm going to show you some of the basics of pottery in this show and teach you what it means to become a potter. What you need to have as far as equipment, what you need to have as far as skills or commitment, and how much fun it can really be and what a great stress reliever it is. Well, let me tell you a little bit about myself before I get into this show because you're going to see a lot of me on this show. Uh, as somebody who calls himself a potter, I started in ceramics at a very young age, like 10 or 12. So I've had a whole lifetime of getting my hands dirty. That being said, I haven't been a potter for very long. And what I discovered was this is a great therapy. This is something that has really helped me to lower my blood pressure, lower my stress levels, and really start getting into building something again with my hands. So I'm really excited to teach you a little bit about what I've learned and maybe how you can use it to become a potter yourself. I'm going to teach you everything I know from the very beginning of wedging clay to prepare it for the wheel, actually attaching it to the clay to the wheel, and then how to bring that clay up and make cylinders, bowls, cups, and things like that that you can do. I promise you, you can do this. It takes a bit of time. It takes more technique. It takes a little bit of commitment of learning what it means to be a potter. Again, my name is Chuck. Welcome to Old School Pottery. Hey all you mudslingers out there, this is Chuck and welcome to our first ever episode of Old School Pottery. I'm going to show you around my workbench here. That's uh, some of the tools that I have just at, uh, you know, at the wedging side of the workbench. We'll talk about wedging right here towards the end. And that's my scale, very important, so that you can weigh things. It's important to know if you want to make something exactly the same size, you got to start with exactly the same weight of clay. Speaking of clay, right there, there it is, clay. All my clay storage, all my clay storage, good, fun stuff. Uh, it is, um, you know, kind of empty right now. That's the drying rack. I have it close to my wheel. That is my wheel. That's my old school wheel. And there's the back side of the bench. Look at that. And there's more tools. All these tools will be kind of like featured later. Um, interesting thing about this wheel. It's called a kick wheel, and it's old school. I'm, I'll talk more about that later at the end. You'll see the, all the features of this old school wheel. Look, there's another wheel. Don't tell anybody. That's the wheel that makes it go. There's a bucket. That bucket's got kind of clean water in it. That's for my sponges and hopefully all the clay. I'll talk more about this uh, tool side of my workbench. Okay, what you see here are the basic potter's tools. Let's talk about that for just a minute. Look at this. Right here, that is the potter's wire. That's for cleaning your clay off of the wheel, pe peeling off your uh, cup or bowl or what have you. Uh, next, you have the sponge. I think we know what that's for. This is a fettler's knife. That's for fettling, which basically means cutting into clay. Uh, the next tool you see is kind of cool. It's a pear-shaped cleaning tool. And that's its name, pear-shaped cleaning tool. The next tool over to the right of that is a simple knife. That knife is used trimming the bottom of most objects while they're still on the bat. It's a wooden knife. It doesn't take out a lot of material and it's just kind of meant to shape up the bottom edge. Next to that is a really simple loop tool. I'll get more into loop tools later when we do more carving. And then you've got a pin tool, which is not a little pokey thing or a needle tool. It's actually called a pin tool and you can really clean up edges nicely on the top of your pots or cups with that. Finally, that's a paintbrush. It doesn't show it very well there, but that is a paintbrush and a pair of calipers. 
Now, you don't have to have all these tools when you're throwing pottery. Uh, most of the potter's toolkit will include most of them, but I kind of uh, really you know, think this is the basics. So if you don't have these, I'll put a link on Amazon. I'm sure you can find them. So enough about tools. You're going to see a lot of tools that I use and probably the same ones over and over again. You'll get the hint. Uh, this workbench, I made myself. I'm pretty proud of it because that white stuff on the top of the workbench is plaster. Uh, you can use concrete or whatever, but if you build your own workbench, you're going to really understand how important this is for the next part, which is wedging. You see me here uh, really getting into you know, kneading the clay and kind of squeezing it to flip over on itself. What I'm doing at this wedging process is, is pretty particular. You squeeze your hands together at the heels and then you're pushing down. And basically what you're doing is taking all of the air out of there by kind of moving the clay in on itself and squeezing out air bubbles. But it's a very specific process. Watch, watch here, carefully. You push your heels of your hands together as you're twisting back and pushing down. What you'll see is that it makes kind of a little horn shape there at the bottom. And as I'm pushing my hands together, it just creates more and more of that wedge. And it's kind of cool because when you see the whole process, you really understand, you know, why these little wedges come up and, you know, it pushes all that uh, into the center so that you really start moving the clay in on itself. And the reason you're doing that will be really, really evident later when you get it on the wheel. But after this process, you know, you start cutting the clay into the shapes of uh, little balls that you're going to play with on the wheel. That's right. I said it. So live with it. <laughs> as, you, as you really get into uh, understanding what wedging is, it plays a big role in helping you center the clay. There's even some people that, you know, have this mythology about clay that says you're getting all the, the protons and neurons and electrons going in the same direction or whatever. Yeah, I'm just pushing the clay because, you know, you push the clay and the clay comes out and push it again and it comes out the other way. And it's actually really cool. So when you get there and you start pushing that uh, horn down uh, as you finish up, you know, that horn... Uh, just kind of th you take your thumbs and 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 kind of squish that along the edge and make your roll and kind of looks like a burrito when you're done. If, are you hungry? I am. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep these a little short and sweet. But as you see, we go on. There's gonna be things you learn just by watching, and I think that's how I picked up so much of the initial instruction. I had somebody come over and help me with the wheel and get me started, but watching videos, talking to other potters, it, there's a, just a ton of resources out there, and I find that they're all very, very helpful. Uh, I'm teasing you a little bit with this video. That's going to be part of the next one, which is when we take those little balls of clay and start making stuff. So that's our next episode. This is the end of our first episode. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you new mudslingers out there. We'll see you next time.